Tomo News presents The Moon. The Great American Eclipse is less than a year away. America has started counting down to a total solar eclipse that will be visible from coast to coast on August 21st next year, and NASA says it will only be visible in the USA. A total solar eclipse occurs when the new moon passes between the sun and the earth. In the path of the eclipse, the sun and its rays are completely blocked by the moon. The last total solar eclipse visible from the U.S. took place in 1991, but could only be seen from parts of Hawaii. The 2017 eclipse will start in Oregon and pass over 12 states before exiting in South Carolina. Its path will be 67 miles wide. The Great American Eclipse of 2017 will be the first total eclipse only visible in the U.S. since the country was founded in 1776. Total solar eclipses occur about once every 18 months, but it's rare for them to be so accessible. According to NASA, next year's eclipse will be the first to stretch across the entire country since 1918. But if you miss this one, don't worry. NASA says the U.S. will only have to wait until 2024 for another total solar eclipse. Russia and the EU have set their sights on settling the moon. A future manned moon base will be one step closer if a planned joint EU-Russia mission to place a lander on the moon's south pole succeeds. In five years, the European and Russian space agencies will land the Luna 27 probe on the edge of the moon's south pole Aitken basin. As parts of the south pole are shielded from the heat of the sun, the region is darker and colder than other areas of the moon. Scientists say that here, water is frozen and collected at the surface. The water could be used as a potential resource to support future human missions at this location. The European Space Agency hopes to build lunar habitats on the lunar south pole as early as 2024 and plans to deploy inflatable domes on the moon's surface as shelter for astronauts. 3D printing robots will build a layer of dirt around the domes. The ESA says the lunar base they hope to build within the next decade could replace the International Space Station as the new base for astronauts to experience life in space. Russia plans to build a permanent moon base by 2030. According to the Russian news agency TASS, the Kremlin plans to put a permanent base on the surface of the moon by 2030. Russia's eventual manned mission to the moon will involve the payload and the upper stage of the Angara A5V heavy lift carrier rocket. The rockets launched in pairs will all carry a piece of equipment essential to the moon mission. Each rocket can carry up to 700 tons. The first pair will carry a lunar lander and a lunar rocket stage to the moon. The second pair will carry another rocket stage along with an advanced crew transportation system. The third pair will carry another rocket stage along with a lunar base. Another component of the mission includes sending a lunar probe to the moon's surface. The probe will look for water deposits on the surface that can be used by a future human colony. Manned missions will begin orbiting the moon in 2028 and in 2030. Humans are expected to finally land on the moon and establish a permanent moon base there during that time. The first stage of the mission will cost around $185 million, with the two other stages costing even more. However, questions remain regarding how Russia will pay for the mission. Private company Moon Express wins U.S. permission for moon mission. The U.S. government has granted a Florida-based company permission to launch a mission to the moon, the first time the government has allowed a company to conduct a commercial space mission beyond Earth's orbit. Cape Canaveral-based Moon Express will fly its MX-1 lander to the moon. The MX-1 is about the size of a coffee table. It will be launched sometime in 2017 on an Electron rocket, a rocket currently being built by startup Rocket Lab. The MX-1 will carry a scientific and commercial payload that includes cremated human remains. It will also transmit pictures and videos of the moon back to Earth. The spacecraft is solar-powered and uses hydrogen peroxide as rocket fuel. Its missions include mining for resources such as water and helium-3. It can also serve as a refueling station for other satellites. At the moment, commercial satellites have only gone as far as the geosynchronous orbit, about 22,000 miles above Earth. Only three nation states, the United States, the former Soviet Union, and China have landed spacecraft on the moon. However, the permission granted to Moon Express does not guarantee access for other private companies to the moon. 
The company said its permission was a one-time deal and that all future requests will be reviewed case by case until new laws are passed. Moon's lunar poles have shifted over the last 3 billion years. A new study suggests that the moon's lunar poles have shifted due to the geological activity beneath its crust. Some 3.5 billion years ago, the moon's internal volcanic activity melted a portion of its mantle, causing it to bubble up toward its surface. The melted matter formed the visible dark patches known as the mare on the moon's surface. The hot melted surface was lighter in density than the colder area around it, which has led the moon's axis to shift 5.5 degrees. The shifted distance is roughly 125 miles, which equals the distance from Washington, D.C. to Philadelphia. The shifted axis has also caused the moon to lose much of its ice deposits as they were exposed to the sun. This new finding may also contribute to the research of where Earth's water came from. Service Module of China's Test Lunar Orbiter Enters Moon Orbit the service module of China's unmanned test lunar orbiter entered on a 127-minute moon orbit on Tuesday. The service module of China's unmanned test lunar orbiter completed three circles around the second Lagrange point, or Earth Moon L2, and left for lunar orbit on January 4th. The module is currently flying in a 127-minute orbit at an altitude of 200 kilometers above the moon's surface. The module is collecting data for China's Chang'e 5 lunar mission, which will be launched in 2017. Chang'e 5 is expected to make a soft landing on the moon and collect at least two kilos of rock and soil samples. China is reportedly looking to find helium-3 on the moon. Helium-3 could be used to power clean fusion plants. Private German Moon Mission to Inspect Apollo 17 Rover a team of scientists in Germany has developed a lunar rover that will soon fly to the moon and visit the legendary Apollo 17 lunar rover vehicle. The rover, dubbed Audi Lunar Quattro, is made of aluminum and titanium and was created almost entirely with 3D printing technology. It is equipped with Audi's four-wheel drive technology, solar panels, rechargeable lithium-ion batteries, and science-grade high-definition cameras. Two rovers will be carried by the Alina spacecraft, which stands for the Autonomous Landing and Navigation Module. Alina will also carry several other payloads, including a lunar plant growth experiment. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket will likely be used to transport the rovers into space. Alina will touch down about 5 kilometers from the Apollo 17 in the Taurus Lithrow Valley. After landing, the two rovers will be deployed and travel toward the Apollo 17 lunar rover. However, they are not allowed any closer than 200 meters from the Apollo rover, per NASA's request. The rovers will send live HD pictures of the Apollo rover back to Earth. The scientists are one of the 16 teams competing for the $30 million Google Lunar X prize. However, they said the ultimate goal wasn't really to win the money, but to reach the Apollo 17 rover. Startup set to launch first commercial moon mission. A California space startup is set to gain government approval for the first private mission to the moon. California startup Moon Express is on the verge of U.S. approval to land on the moon in 2017. In October, the startup announced a deal with Rocket Lab USA for multiple manned missions to the moon. Their MX-1 lander spacecraft will travel aboard Rocket Lab's 52.5-foot-tall Electron rocket for testing. Moon Express's MX-1 lander consists of a solar panel, pressure and tanks, and a payload deck. The small vehicle would deliver scientific hardware to the moon's surface. Moon Express is hoping to find and mine lunar resources, including platinum, titanium, and the rare isotope helium-3. Helium-3 is a light, non-radioactive isotope of helium with two protons and one neutron, in contrast with two neutrons found in helium. This missing neutron allows helium-3 to produce clean energy. Nuclear fission splits an atom's nucleus in half, resulting in heat but also radioactive waste. Nuclear fusion combines nuclei to produce energy, though when tested with hydrogen isotopes, deuterium, and tritium, 
Both produced unsafe radioactive neutrons. On the other hand, helium-3 fusion is reportedly safe. One reaction process uses two helium-3 atoms to generate helium, and two protons with no radioactive byproducts. Helium-3 doesn't occur naturally on Earth, but the Sun has been emitting it for billions of years, and some has accumulated on the Moon. 2.2 pounds of helium-3, combined with 1.5 pounds of deuterium, produces 19 megawatt years of energy. 25 tons of it could theoretically power the U.S. for an entire year. UC Berkeley researchers designed shape-shifting robots that can roll on the moon. These robots can change their shapes to do this. Alice Agagino is a mechanical engineering professor at UC Berkeley. Agagino and her team of researchers are trying to revolutionize space exploration with their research. It will be ridiculously inexpensive compared to the current rovers. We hope it will be more robust, will be faster, and be able to handle more complicated terrains. Also known as a six-bar tensegrity structure, these spherical-shaped robots roll along surfaces by shifting their center of gravity. They have either compressive elements that are rods, or they have elastic elements which are kind of like rubber bands. And they shift their shape by pulling on the elastic elements and making them longer or shorter, uh, allowing them to take on a range of different shapes and this change of gravity. One of the shape-shifting shapes that we're interested in is for them to be flat so that in storage in a rover or in spacecraft they can be flat and then they can spring open and then be launched. Agogino says their target mission is either the moon or Titan, which is one of Saturn's moons. In addition to space exploration, researchers are also finding ways to use these robots on Earth. We're also exploring applications where, in fact, the aircraft itself might be a tensegrity that can fly through the air, drop on the ground, and actually conduct some kind of search and rescue or delivery of emergency supplies. Although the first robot prototype was built with Legos, the latest version has been upgraded with aluminum rods and 3D printed parts. And you thought the moon was made of cheese. Researchers in Israel have revived a decades-old theory that the moon was created by a series of collisions in space. Many scientists believe the moon was created when a Mars-sized planet crashed into Earth billions of years ago. However, the Israeli researchers say simulations show their theory is the correct one. According to some experts, the moon was created over millions of years by objects in space colliding with Earth. Multiple impacts and material from the planet flying into space. That material then began orbiting Earth. The objects hit Earth at different angles, which sent more material into space than would have occurred from a single impact. According to researchers, the objects that collided with Earth had between a hundredth and a tenth of the planet's mass. So much material was excavated from Earth by these collisions that a ring of debris formed around the planet. As the debris orbited Earth, it then collided, forming small moons known as moonlets. As many as 20 moonlets then collided together over millions of years to form the moon. The researchers say this explains why the moon has an Earth-like chemical makeup. A widely believed theory says a planet called Theia provided most of the building materials for the moon when it crashed into Earth 4.5 billion years ago. But now the Israeli scientists say more research into the interiors of Earth and the moon is needed to prove their theory right. SpaceX to fly two tourists around the moon next year. This week, SpaceX announced bold plans to next year fly two paying passengers around the moon using technology that's still in development. In 2018, SpaceX hopes to fly two private citizens deeper into space than any human has journeyed previously. The two travelers will trek some 400,000 miles around and beyond the moon during the seven-day mission before looping back to Earth. Before training for the mission, SpaceX says each of the unnamed passengers will undergo a series of tests for their health and fitness. 
The passengers are set to travel aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, shot into orbit by a multi-stage Falcon Heavy rocket. The still-in-design rocket's first stage consists of three reusable rockets that produce half a million pounds of thrust. After separating, the central rocket propels the payload into orbit, where it continues on its voyage. SpaceX founder Elon Musk says the travelers will be trained for emergencies. However, the Crew Dragon spacecraft, which is also still being developed, will be mainly piloted autonomously. The crew can monitor real-time ship diagnostics, change the temperature, and take in views through one of the vessel's four windows. The spacecraft will conduct a flyby of the surface of the moon before traveling further out into space, where no human has gone before. It will then use the moon's gravity to slingshot back toward Earth. SpaceX hopes to launch the mission in late 2018, following a series of tests on the rocket and spacecraft. The identity of those traveling remains unknown, but one thing's for sure, they're very brave individuals indeed, and possibly also Scrooge McDuck Rich. Something is making space music on the dark side of the moon. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes. All except a few stubborn nut jobs know that NASA astronauts landed on the moon during the 1969 Apollo 11 mission. Many of us have also seen the movie Apollo 13, in which astronaut Tom Hanks saves the day before going on to find Private Ryan. But many don't know a lot about Apollo 10, the final dress rehearsal test mission sent up before Neil Armstrong put his boots on the moon and gave us this iconic sound clip. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Apollo 10 didn't land, its mission was to orbit the moon, and that meant going over to the dark side. For over an hour, the astronauts were invisible and inaudible to Houston as they went around the far side of the moon. But while Mission Control couldn't hear anything during that hour or so, the guys on the spacecraft heard a lot, stuff the public is just starting to hear about since for decades, NASA's archives were classified. The Apollo 10 crew reported hearing weird sounds they likened to some kind of strange space music. The space music sounded like this, and NASA also recorded the crew's reaction. You hear that? That whistling sound? There's plenty of theories for this howling, weird space music. Magnetic fields, the atmosphere interfering with radios. But here's the thing. The moon doesn't have a magnetic field and doesn't have enough atmosphere to carry sound. So, pick your theory. Some unknown boring science thing? Alien whale songs? Or maybe, just maybe, a Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders concert from Mars. We're gonna go with Ziggy. Your pick? A Japanese architecture and engineering firm has a plan to turn the moon into a giant solar power plant. It proposes building a collection of solar panels called a lunar ring, 11,000 kilometers long by 19 kilometers wide on the moon's equator. The belt would receive power directly from the sun. The solar power would then be beamed to Earth via microwaves and lasers. The company said it could continuously send 13,000 terawatts of power back to Earth at full capacity. The company is planning on building the lunar ring with robots 